Hello, hello. I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. All right, Arknight, still. Yes, not a whole, whole lot to be said. No more streams this week, most likely. Yeah, that is the plan. Yeah, tonight's stream is probably going to be a little bit shorter, and I might be a little bit quieter than usual. Uh, on account of the fact that I have a slightly sore throat today. So, but yes. In addition, we also don't have an operator spotlight lined up for this particular day. Unfortunately, I was quite busy yesterday, so I didn't have much time before work, and I didn't have much energy after work to be able to work on that. So yes. Instead, though, we are going to be doing a little bit of a tactical... tactics meeting, I suppose thinking a little bit about how we are going to attempt to clear this stage, which has been quite a bother for us. But yes. So, next week we should be seeing roughly the same schedule. Yeah, I have wanted to aim for a little bit before 9 today, but around 9 seems to be the most realistic outcome for a Friday stream. But yes, I can definitely, definitely make uh, 8.30 happen on Wednesday, and that is the plan. But yes, next Wednesday we have more Arc Nights planned, and then next Friday, hopefully, we will be resuming the collab series, if not, we'll be doing more Arc Nights. But yes, so, I suppose there's not a whole lot else to be said before we get into things, so let's get into things. Into things we are. So yes, so, I pulled up this map, I got it off of a website, which I will, I suppose I'll link it in the description because I can't remember the URL off the top of my head. Something, something along the lines of Ace Ship, but there's more to it than that. But anyway, so they've got a bunch of Arknights resources, you know, uh, sprites and whatnot, and all, and uh, audio, and also apparently maps. So yes, so. The trouble spots are where the Originium slugs are, the infused Originium slugs, which, you know, are not slugs in the traditional sense on account of the fact that they have any limbs whatsoever. But despite appearances, I've also noticed that they're not spiders because they uh, have they have six limbs, actually, instead of eight. So yes, so their presence has been a continual thorn in our collective side, and I would like to make them uh, not be a thing as quickly as possible. So yes, so here are where the slugs begin. Over the course of the map, they will sort of activate. They stay there for a while, and they activate in roughly this order. I don't know why I said roughly, it is the same every time. But yes, so the first group of slugs sort of starts when the mission, you know, is just sort of starting to pick up when there's a decent number of enemies coming from these gates here. But yeah, the second wave begins sort of a little ways after that. I admit I wasn't paying, I haven't been paying that much attention in the attempts that we've done of 4-7, because usually by that point I'm kind of panicking. Which is, you know, not ideal, but it is what it is. But yes. And then, the third wave of slugs doesn't come until pretty late into the mission. Sort of as a add-on to the already existing waves of infused slugs that are coming our way. So, given the circumstances, we need to think things through a little bit more than I typically do, perhaps. So, the first group of slugs... Well, let's start by def settling things a little bit, or not settling things, going over them in a little bit more detail. So, each group of slugs has two slugs per tile, and our defenders can each take at least two slugs while surviving. Fire Whistle, our lowest defense defender, doesn't survive very well, she doesn't survive very well to slugs. She 
Basically, if she were to take any more damage after that, she would uh, be defeated. But two slugs is something that she can survive. So any other defender that we have could also survive a similar number of slugs. But yes, Ponsiris, with her defense buff active, can almost certainly survive a good number of slugs as well. And so yes, so that is valuable, something worth knowing, something worth planning on. But yeah, definitely any ranged unit that we might deploy will almost certainly die to even just one slug explosion. They could maybe survive two, but that's, or maybe survive one, but they would definitely die to two. But yes, with or without a medic and whether or not they are medics, this is true. So when we want the slugs to explode, we want them to explode out of range of our ranged units. This is very much true. But yes, we found some success earlier using Manticore in that she was able to resist the slugs by virtue of the fact that she has a pretty decent chance to avoid any physical or magical or uh, arts damage. So the slug explosions, she can simply not, just not, <laughs> not acknowledge them if she doesn't feel so inclined, which is quite nice. But yes, that being said, Frost or Manticores probably would be best used to slow the slugs to keep them from all exploding on our defensive lines. Because yes, one thing I need I have decided that is probably going to be a good idea, something to consider at the very least, is we're probably going to want to Well, yeah. So, I talked about it a little bit last time, but sort of my usual strategy is, you know, to block up a choke point very sort of neatly using, say, two defenders here with their shields, a medic here or something of the sort. But yeah, medic here to keep them healed and all of that. And that works reasonably well, but it doesn't really work on the very high amounts of burst damage that come from the slugs bursting. So we need to think things through a little bit more. The main issue... The main issue is that the slugs, upon exploding, they don't merely damage whoever was blocking them. They damage every adjacent unit, as far as I can tell. I believe... I don't know precisely what the slug's range is, but I'm assuming it's roughly a circle, you know, roughly thus sized. Because they can always hit someone adjacent to them, and I'm pretty confident that they can hit someone diagonal to them as well. So, basically every space, and you know, they can exist between tiles, but every space that is roughly a tile away from them, diagonally or, or orthogonally, is in the danger zone. So given that, it would probably be best if I were to get my proper tool here. Yes, if I were to take the defenders and spread them out a little bit more like this, maybe even. Because this way, if there are slugs here that explode, but yeah, the, the explosion will damage all of these tiles, leaving this defender undamaged. Now, the problem with that is that with this sort of setup, I would have to deploy two medics in order to be able to keep both defenders up. And granted, one of our defenders is Gummy, who is able to heal herself of her own accord. But yes, our other defender at the moment is Fire Whistle, who is able to attack at range. But yes. I believe that's roughly the range. Fire Whistle... There's definitely... Yeah, there's two spaces in between, and it's... Yeah, it's a 2 by 3 area. Yeah, so I drew it a little bit big there, but... 
if we were to position our defenders thusly, this is the sort of coverage that that fire whistle would have. Having the ability to do a little bit more damage to the slugs as they get close to her would be very nice. Especially if we could maybe get them to explode maybe out of range, though I don't know. I don't I'm not confident that I can get them to explode out of range of gummy. But yes. Anyway, one way or the other, having this gap here will protect our operators a little bit more. But yeah, I never really thought to do that sort of thing before because again, I always wanted to keep them close so it was easy for a single medic to attend to both of them. But that also brings up the point that if you have, you know, a single medic healing two targets, then they have to split up their healing between those two targets which means in areas or in times when there's a lot of demand for healing, those targets may not get all of the healing that they need and might just go down. But yes, one way or the other though, we also want to make sure that our medics are not in the firing line as much as possible. So it might be best if we were to place a medic, say, you know, back here behind our defender, because I don't know that the slug explosion, if they explode here, will have quite enough range. And again, these areas that I'm drawing here are purely estimates. But yeah, I don't know that the slug explosion will have quite enough range to hit our medics if they're behind the defender diagonally. And of course, it definitely won't be a problem if we were to place a medic here, because any slugs that explode here would definitely be way out of range. And of course, what we could also do is we could also place a medic here, facing thus, and healing... Uh, that's a little bit... yeah, there we go. That's more like the medic range. A little bit loose with the drawing, but it is what it is. So that would allow us to cover Gummy and anyone else we decide to position near her. Yeah, of course, this does run into the issue that we still don't have any sort of overlap in our medics. So if one medic takes damage, they have to heal themselves and won't be able to attend or, uh, yeah, they'll have to heal themselves. And that means that they won't be healing whoever they need to be healing during the rest of the time. But yes. So, all that being said, I think probably... I don't know at this point, and we'll probably need to do a little bit more experimenting. I don't know that I don't expect to beat the mission today necessarily. Um, we'll have to do some more experimenting most likely, but it might be feasible to potentially place, uh, yeah, potentially place a guard, you know, here or so. Definitely thinking of putting a guard behind both of them if I can. Though I suppose now that I think about it, Gap or uh, Frostleaf is the only ranged guard I have currently. Astesia could do okay, but she wouldn't be able to withstand that much damage. I think, speaking of Frostleaf, she does have some resistance on her. She does have some resistance on her, so that could be good to draw some of the caster's attention. Though that being said, she doesn't have more resistance than Gummy. So it's a little bit of a moot point, I suppose. But yes, of course, we also need to be mindful. We need to deploy Jessica here. And of course, we could swap out our operators if we felt so inclined. But we need to get some coverage on Jessica around here to deal with the drones coming from here. And given the, given the uh, positioning of Jessica, it might just be reasonable to not have to worry too much about having a guard behind, uh, yeah, having a guard behind uh, Fire Whistle. Yeah, that might not be a huge concern of ours. We might just be able to get away with just the damage from Jessica. Of course, now that I think about it, putting Jessica here is probably the worst place we could put her because then, you know, slug explodes, she's dead. So, more practically, we would need to place Jessica. 
you would need to place Jessica here or so, which will place her firmly outside the range of any medic, so she is completely on her own. <laughs> of course, by the point where that we're getting lots of slugs coming from these areas, we could also have Manticore on the field, dealing damage in a pretty sizable area, like so. But yes, if we are if we were to do that, then we'd probably have a pretty decent uh, decent chance of slugs dying before they get to Jessica. And in fact, if we we're thinking about doing that, it might make more sense to position Manticore like this, covering that area, because then there is sort of the maximum amount of time that they are exposed to her attacks, which can slow them and there is a maximum amount of time in which they could potentially uh, explode uh, outside of Jessica destroying range. Of course, positioned like this, Jessica will still be able to deal... Uh, she doesn't have quite that far range on her, I don't think. But yes, Jessica will still be able to deal some damage to enemies coming from here before they uh, get onto the field in any major way. And in fact, we'll be able to attack them while they're in their uh, deployment area there. So yeah, so I think it's mostly slugs that come out of these top two areas here. Mostly normal enemies come out of the side here, but I have seen slugs come from there too. So yeah, so with that in mind... I don't think either of our medics is necessarily more suited for the task than what we, than either of the other one. I suppose Ga Hibiscus has the benefit of having just being significantly higher level than Gaviel, so she can just heal more per heal. Plus, since she doesn't have any abilities that give her sort of a healing over time, she does a little bit more upfront healing. So Gaviel could be a little bit more useful, say, here, in the role supporting Gummy, the G and G connection, I suppose. But yes, the using Gaviel and Gummy together could probably be helpful, because Gummy can heal herself anyway, so I don't need to necessarily... Yeah, we don't necessarily need to worry as much about the possibility of Gaviel not having as potent of a heal as Gummy might need, because Gummy will probably not need as much healing anyway. Sip. But yes, it might also be useful to use Gummy's uh, second skill to give her a little bit more defense and a little bit more healing. Though granted, she doesn't... I don't believe she does any healing while it's active, it does give her a significant defense bonus, which is mostly what I was thinking about with it. But yeah, so anyway, so let's wipe things up here and think a little bit about... Actually, no, we'll keep this as it is because I want to have this as a reference. So yes, so this is Fire Whistle. Gummy. Gaviel. Yes, Hibiscus. Jessica will go in one of these two tiles. I'm not, still not quite decided on which. Manticore. I should put an arrow to be extra clear. Yes, Manticore. And that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six operators. So, we have space for six more, I think. Yeah, the deployment limit is... What is the deployment limit? No, it's not It's not 12. What am I thinking? 12 is the number of operators you can bring. Um, so, yeah, I think the deployment limit is 10? 8? One of those two. So, yes. So, given what we have here, I suppose it would be... I might as well follow through on the idea I had earlier and place Frostleaf like so. Of course, then we run into the issue that Frostleaf might be exposed to slug explosions coming from behind her, which would be less than ideal. <laughs> less than ideal. But, 
No, she doesn't really have great. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't really have great defense either, to be honest. Of course, you know. Not that I'm expecting her to have as much defense as a defender, given that that is the role of a defender. But hopefully we're not going to run into, you know, double slugs during this time. But yes. Another decent option would be having Pon Cyrus here or so. But yes. I suppose we do also need to think about where we're going to put uh, Texas and Pon Cyrus. But yeah, Pon Cyrus being there would give us you know, a little bit more defense in front of uh, Fire Whistle, so she's not necessarily the last line of defense. But yeah, I'm more okay with Gummy being the left, or, well, yeah, not last line of defense. I guess she would be, yeah, without Pon Cyrus there, Fire Whistle would be simultaneously the last and first line of defense. So, anyway, that's not necessarily great, so <laughs> you might want a situation that uh, avoids that. Of course, that being said, having Pon Cyrus here means that she's outside of Hibiscus's range, which is bad. So, we might actually... I was reluctant to place the theoretical fire whistle further back because I wanted to avoid... Whoop, I didn't realize that was on a separate layer. But yes, I wanted to avoid the potential of... Uh, Fire Whistle. Yeah, I wanted to avoid Fire Whistle being attacked from behind here immediately. Though I suppose those slugs are going to come from behind at some point anyway, so this just means that she'll be a little bit closer to them when they start attacking her. But yes. So, Fire Whistle there would mean that we can place Pon Cyrus here which means that Pon Cyrus can benefit from Hibiscus's healing and not be destroyed, which is useful. But yeah, another thing that I had mentioned before was I was uh, I expressed some uh, concern about the rate at which Pon Cyrus generates uh, deployment points after her skill has been activated. Because I was thinking that, you know, one deployment point every five seconds was okay, but it wasn't great. But yeah, I actually did some math off stream as well. And uh, I determined that, yeah, one 0 0.2 uh, deployment points per second isn't really too bad. Because compared to, say, charge uh, gamma, it's not a huge, huge difference. I, didn't, I don't remember offhand the exact amount of uh, DP per second that other other uh, charge skills generate, mathematically speaking, because again, they, the rest of them generate deployment points in sort of a lump sum. But since they have such a long time between uses, that makes it so Pon Cyrus's skill doesn't really, doesn't lag behind that much. Certainly her second skill doesn't lag behind DP generation like I don't know. Let me, let me put it another way. Once it is permanently active, and it is continuously generating deployment points on account of no longer being able to be manually activated, it's definitely generating deployment points faster than it did, because, you know, Pon Cyrus' skill not only needs to charge, as all other skills do, or all other, uh, as, yeah, as her, de as her charge gamma skill does, but it also, you know, has a duration. It's a buff. So it will be active for a certain amount of time before it can start charging again, which will more than double the amount of time necessary to start generating deployment points again. So yeah, so I didn't really think that through so much when I was evaluating her earlier. But uh, my instincts were correct that Engineer's Wish gives her sort of a slower deployment point generation overall, but I think definitely in this circumstance, the increased defense that she gets and the increased max HP that she gets from being deployed for a certain amount of time, I definitely think that those are pretty worth it. But yes, so that brings us up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 operators, which might be the limit. 
I have forgotten, genuinely. Um, if not, if it is an option, and I'll put a, put them in blue. The blue doesn't stand out quite as well, but it just needs to be there so I can think about it. Um, but yeah, meteorite could be good. Meteorite could be good facing thus. You take things out a little bit faster. Yeah, that really doesn't stick out against the gray. Oops. That's better. That's worse. Okay. <laughs> but yes, meteorite facing that way to cover a little bit of this area. Anything we can do to reduce the enemies coming through is good. And whichever of... Yeah, if we have one more deployment slot, then whichever of... Amia and Jessica is not deployed already could be useful in uh, this other area up here. But yeah, basically on whichever tile isn't already occupied. But yeah, this area right here is basically just no man's land because we can't reasonably place any operators there and expect them to survive. But yeah, even, you know, ranged operators will get shot at by the drones and we don't want that. So, nobody nobody can live here. That is unsurvivable. Yeah, Gabriel can only range this far, I believe. But yes. So, beyond that, I think starting off, we'll probably place... Uh, we'll probably space out Texas and Pond Cyrus. Sort of like how Fire Whistle and Gummy are currently. I don't, uh, that might not be as good of an idea, actually. Because again, by the time the slugs start moving, ideally I would have my defenders in place. But yeah. I think, I do think that... Hmm. Yeah, Charge Gamma will probably give me a slightly higher amount of DP per second compared to Sword Rain, but I don't think it's going to be that significant. Yeah, I definitely think we're going to have to place... We're definitely going to have to, play, have to place Texas and Ponsiris relatively close so that they can both get healed because we're not going to have a whole lot of time to place all of the uh, all of the medics and all of the uh, defenders that we would like to have in place beforehand. So, uh, with that, I think we're pretty good to go. I think we've considered things fairly well. We might only have time for one or two attempts, but uh, at least those attempts will be the most well-thought-out attempts we've made at basically anything in the history of this stream. And actually, let me, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to make the... Where did I place the overlay? Because I do want to be able to reference my little diagram there, but I don't want it to show up on stream because I want you to save the video game we're playing. All right, so that is that. Okay. So yeah, so Ponsiris will be placed south of the range tiles. Hmm, I don't know. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any benefit in deploying. Again, I was thinking about staggering their deployment a little bit, but there, there's no benefit in it, I don't think. Yes. Again, we might want to think about... Hmm. Okay, I've just realized where things are right now. Uh, hmm, this is bad, actually, because Hibiscus is definitely going to die if any of these slugs uh, ever do anything at all. If they ever so much as think about doing a thing, they will. Uh, she will perish. Um, which is bad. I don't like that. Yes. Meteorite being deployed a little bit earlier than I was thinking about is not the worst thing in the world. Maybe not the best thing either. We might need to reverse our... Uh... Mm, I don't know. I don't think that would... 
Her being here wouldn't block Hibiscus. Hmm. Killing them... Hmm. Actually, if... Hold on. Because if we can kill them one at a time... If we can kill them one at a time... Oh dear. I am a little bit afraid. I apologize. Um, this... Okay, let's start... Uh, working things uh, the way they ought to be. Okay, so Estesia has done her job. Jessica, I forgot about. Uh, <laughs> so we are not quite going to get things uh, exactly as clean as they might be. Right, I also forgot to uh, put a uh, medic around Jessica, so that's a bit unfortunate for uh, a medic. Yes, a medic defending... Uh, Medic healing uh, gummy. There we go. So yeah, so the plan is falling apart a little bit, but that's okay. We can make this work. But yeah, Jessica is in fact uh, doing work. Hmm. Ready to ambush. Yes, fire whistle will be fine. Mm, that's going to kill Meteorite. But that's okay. Hmm. Okay, so we have lost our defense there. Hmm. Yeah, despite the fact that this uh, is going pretty uh, awfully by basically any reasonable metric. I think that was pretty okay. I think we might actually win this mission one way or the other. Um, it's not going to be a clean win, but, you know, sometimes you just need a win. This should work. Alright. Crossleaf can survive an explosion. But she also gets uh, attacked, which is not great. Um, hmm. So how do how are we going to do this? Time to prove myself. So it turned out there were other considerations. That slug when it explodes is going to be. Oh, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, hmm. Unfortunate. I'm dead on my feet. But it's not time to quit yet. I guess that didn't take quite as long as I was thinking it would. <clears throat> well, that went pretty okay. Not too bad, to be honest. But yeah, I think I just need to tighten up my execution a little bit. So yes, so Texas was fine. One thing that I definitely could have improved upon is, as has been mentioned, you know, I didn't quite, uh, I didn't do very well at ensuring that retreating our uh, units before they get defeated. All right. So, getting this dealt with sooner rather than later is good. Estesia. Uh, Estesia, there she is. Estesia. Um, oh, oh, right. We do need to have a medic uh, sooner rather than later. I think I've messed up my deployment order quite a bit here. She is surviving pretty well, actually, to be honest. Estesia does have enough survivability on her to take two slugs so i can that's nice that's comfortable i can be pleased with that oh <laughs> uh, that was uh probably the worst that i could have done that huh hmm 
So, things are looking bad. I think part of the issue here was that we had our... Uh, we had Frostleaf taking a little bit too much heat. Um, yeah, we're going to lose because of the drones. Um, yeah, so that was that was a, a simple mistake. Yeah, that was a, a very easy mistake, or a very small mistake. That was That is easy to correct. So, it is what it is. Yes. Alright, alright. I probably could have just retreated after the Jessica debacle. Uh, because, yeah, definitely... Once we lost Jessica, we weren't going to recover from that. So, yeah. Please take good care of yourself while I'm gone. So, without hesitation, we will place Ponsiris, because she is very strong and very capable of dealing with things. Arrived at the most optimal combat location. Ready yes. To I feel like Estesia... I was a little bit iffy on her deployment. I kind of jumped the gun there. I got a little bit nervous. But yeah, I'm... It didn't turn out too badly. Again, she was able to defeat the slugs relatively easily. And of course, maybe that should be expected because they're, you know, not that strong. They're not strong at all, really. Because yes, they aren't meant to deal a lot of damage with their attacks. They're meant to deal damage with their, you know, explosion. So again, if we can sort of sort this out quickly, Yeah, this is not the best, but we can de deploy Hibiscus very soon. Nope. Okay. That was bad. So, we will survive. Oh, actually, that slug was out of range of... That slug was out of range of uh, Ponsiris. Interesting. Okay. So they don't have quite as massive of a range as I was thinking that they did. This should work. I'm feeling a lot better now, to be honest. Yeah, just about everything that's going on. Um, right, Jessica. So, this is not the best. I do want to desperately deploy the uh, fire whistle, like, now. Okay, we've lost Gummy. Oh, right, because I didn't have a medic. Um... Right, right, right. So we're going to have to undeploy Meteorite, I think. Yeah, I just didn't think about that. Mm. But yeah. Again, <laughs> redeploying, undeploying, just generally changing my... How I deploy my units is not something I tend to think about. Uh, which is definitely to my detriment. So, Frostleaf probably will not survive. Jessica also will not survive, but... Hmm. Alright, Astesia? Um... I don't know that we can salvage this, but we can definitely try. Um... Hmm. Because, yeah, we've got a lot of ranged damage, or a lot of, uh... I guess, yeah, we've defeated enough drones that they're, like, at least not all here at the same time. I don't know that we're going to run into any more. Amia is probably not going to survive here for too long. Manticore did not survive for very long either. Don't be afraid. We don't need healing just yet. Gummy is probably good here. Hmm. Gummy's really not surviving quite as well as I would like. What is her... Her defense is pretty... pretty decent. 
It's not like low, low. It's evidently not high, high, but um, I was expecting her to survive better than that. Um, all right, we have lost, I think. Um, Cause yeah, I don't believe that Frostleaf can. Well, I've been surprised before, but I don't think that Frostleaf can stand up to what she's going to have to endure if we hope to uh, salvage this. Yeah, definitely not. Um, so yeah, so we have lost. So yeah. So I needed to... Uh, hmm. This is a curious one. Because I'm... Gummy is not surviving as well as I thought she would. I guess, you know, she has... 400 defense, but 400 defense isn't that much more than 300 defense, you know. Hmm. So it might actually be... Again, I thought about it, but it might actually be to our benefit to use this to get the, the defense bonus. Yeah, beyond that, I don't think... Yeah, beyond that, I just needed to, uh, again, tighten up my execution a little bit. Stay focused. Look straight ahead. Yes, Ponsiris is doing just fine. Absolutely excellently. Surviving like a true champion. Please choose tactics that make use of my arts. Hmm. Yes, Astasia is. Yeah, Astasia is good to deploy basically whenever. We don't need to worry about her being here at all. Yes, sooner rather than later, we want to have a medic on the field to ensure that our uh, our uh, vanguards will uh, live. All right, I do need to wait until that slug explodes. Yet, uh, I should have undeployed her faster, I think, but we're doing okay. So yes, now we're going to deploy Meteorite so that she can immediately start to deal a little bit of extra damage and thin out these waves. Doing so will make it less likely that we will have enemies going past our defenses, even if it's not 100% sure that we won't. But yes. But yeah, I'm okay with how this is. Um, no problem. Now we're going to want to retreat her, I think. Frostly. Okay. And then Gummy. We'll deploy Gummy as soon as we have Waiting more points. deployment points to do so. To Jessica, Jessica, right, Jessica. I forgot about Jessica. This is bad. Um... <laughs> Okay, Ponsiris has her... Nope. Ponsiris, thank you. I am certainly... Uh, there is certainly some stress being concentrated here. And sure. For sure. So yeah, Jessica needed to be deployed a little bit sooner there because she wasn't... We did uh, have an enemy leak through our defenses, but we're doing okay. Gummy is... Gummy's skill is active whenever we need it. And we are at the deployment limit. Okay. Excess probably isn't going to provide us a whole lot more value going forward. But, you know who will? Manticore, Manticore right. Alright. Jessica can start uh, shooting. <laughs> Better. Mm, just, er, mm. Okay, Gummy is gonna live, I think. We're gonna, we're gonna get through this. All right, Frostleaf maybe won't. Oh no, Frostleaf did, okay. That kind of went the opposite of how I expected, but uh, oh well. Hmm. So yeah, so the top lane is actually doing really well. Of course, now we're going to, our bottom lane's going to be tested quite a bit. Yeah, um, hmm. So, this might actually not be a great place 
<laughs> this might not be a great, uh, yeah, I might not have chosen a great way to deploy, uh, fire whistle. Hmm. We can distract them a little bit with Amia. And hopefully get some more damage on these fellows before they uh, become a problem for us. Amia is within range to be healed. Um, deploying Texas would just be a waste, I think. Um, yeah, I don't think we would have been able to block that enemy long enough for it to matter. We've just lost Amia, but that's okay. Um... Okay, gummy, gummy, gummy. More powerful healing, please. Thank you. Alright. Honestly, Fire Whistle is really, really putting in the work right now. He is sort of the MVP here. Yeah, we might need to rethink things a little bit, to be honest. But uh, a win is a win. We're fine. Okay. So yeah. So we had the issue there that because our guards were like both within Fire Whistle's attack range, or very close to Fire Whistle's attack range, we were having the issue where they would like basically just uh, both be killed when slugs would explode. Given the... We could do better. Um, but yeah, anyway, as I was saying, so given what we were just saw, we could probably... In fact, we could definitely use a uh, hibiscus like here facing that rightwards because we didn't really... Yeah, we... I guess, yeah, we needed faster, better healing on the right-hand side, um, whereas the left-hand side was doing pretty okay, and of course part of that was because Hibiscus was there. So, you know, I can't necessarily, you know, there's opportunity cost to consider. Things aren't going to be the exact same once we move Hibiscus and Gaviel and exchange them as I was planning there. Yeah, we can't expect things to be exactly the same. But I think that because our defenses were just so solid in that top lane that we were probably pretty okay there. Because yeah, again, we had the, the defensive team of Fire Whistle and uh, yeah, we had the defensive potential of Fire Whistle and uh, or we had extra damage from Fire Whistle and then the defense from Pon Cyrus, which really, really helped a lot. But yeah, another, another improvement, I think we could probably have moved, uh, we probably could have moved Gaviel and, and Frostleaf back one each, or, uh, not Gaviel, Gummy and Frostleaf back one each. That way, uh, Gaviel would still be outside of explosion range, because it does seem that, I'm confident it's not just, like, a plus shape, the AoE on the explosion, but it definitely doesn't seem to... I don't know. Again, it's kind of it's kind of hard to judge distances sometimes because the game, you know, it's at an it's at a slight angle, and the enemies are all sort of two dimensional. If we were looking at it from the top down, we'd probably be able to estimate AOEs better. But um, yeah, and if they you know just sort of filled up, well, I don't know. Again, it's hard to to say precisely, but. Most of that went pretty well. The issue was just that the eventually the defense would collapse on the lower lane. And I think switching out Gummy's skill was good because we got good use out of the extra defense even if it didn't really save us per se in the end. But yeah, we probably could have swung that in a way that it would have been more impactful. Yeah, again, just placing our units slightly differently. Like, honestly, if if what I suspect is true, 
then we might even be able to get away with deploying Gummy, like, directly north of Gaviel. That might actually be viable. Because, yeah, again, the issue right now that I'm suspecting is that, or I was, the reason that I placed her so forward is because I wanted to ensure that, you know, no matter what happens, even if, you know, an enemy gets, pa or even if the slug gets past her a little bit, it wouldn't be close enough to deal damage to Gaviel, who would be almost certainly taken out in one hit. But yeah, the slugs are not as bad. They're bad, but they're not as bad as I was thinking. Because even our relatively less defensive, less, uh, our less defensive and lower HP having guards survive their attacks pretty well. I suppose Astesia does have, she does, well, I was going to say lower defense, but like her defense is actually almost the same as Gummy's. No, well, no, hold on. Let me, <laughs> not Gummy. I meant uh, Fire Whistle. Yeah, her defense is almost the same as Fire Whistle. Her attack is actually lower. Granted, she probably attacks faster. And she does arch damage, so. But yeah. Esthesia was fine. She did her job perfectly well. There's nothing really to say about that. Um, yeah, Fire Whistle did her job fine. Again, we lost, uh, or a lot of enemies sort of got past, or not, they didn't get past. They exploded at inconvenient times, which uh, caused some problems for our uh, defenses. But again, if we just placed, again, even if we just placed Gummy and Frostleaf like back one space, that probably would have radically altered uh, things because Again, what I didn't really take into account is the fact that Fire Whistle is really strong. <laughs> she's really strong. She does a lot of damage. Which, granted, she's using an artillery piece, so, like, maybe that's to be expected. But, um, I didn't expect it, at the very least. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, once again, most of that was solid. We beat the stage. We did win. We did win. We could have won better. And, uh, yeah, we could have won better. But, I do think that was a good learning experience. And so, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I think we will, with that, wrap up a little bit. I'm not feeling too, too bad. I guess... Whenever I have a slightly sore throat at the beginning of a stream, I'm always worried that, oh, you know, sore throat at the beginning of a stream, though. I'm always worried, yeah, I'm always worried that, like, one hour in, or half an hour in, I'll just be, like, barely audible, rasping through my destroyed esophagus, uh, but, you know, I'm doing okay, I'm in experiencing slightly more discomfort than I was earlier, but I'm not, you know, awful, I'm not doing awful. Yes. So. Stretch. I'd say it's about time that we wrap up. So, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can find a target on my own. So, in the meantime, I will be uh, going over the schedule. So, for the rest of the week, uh, no schedule. Yeah, I'm not expecting any more streams this week, but we are expecting streams next week. Yeah, speaking of schedules, I did actually, uh, I realized that the schedule on my Twitch page is not, uh, was not accurate. It was only saying, uh, the, uh, the Wednesday stream, and, uh, it was saying a slightly different time than I usually plan on for my Wednesday streams. So that's revised, uh, and also now it will say that, uh, you know, that we do a stream on Fridays, because we do. But yes, so uh, the Friday stream is on the schedule now, the Wednesday stream is at the right time on the schedule now. Um, let's see, anything else to be said? 
Oh, I guess I should mention the time that the streams are, huh? Yes. Wednesday stream on Wednesday, if you could, <laughs> if you could possibly uh, have anticipated that. But yes, the Wednesday stream is on Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and will be Arknights. The Friday stream is on Fridays at 9 p.m. Central Time. Yeah. The plan is to alternate between doing a collab with Sheppy Sheps and doing a, uh, doing Arknights. This happened to be an Arknights week, and we'll try to get things settled for, uh, next week. Again, things are always somewhat more challenging when we're, you know, mixing different schedules together. But yeah. There's a... We've already had to compromise a lot to try and find a good time, so... It doesn't always work out quite as well as we would like, but... Hopefully, uh, hopefully things will work out. I appreciate your patience so far, and uh, I ask for your patience in the future as we continue going forward towards this. But yes. So, with all that said, I don't see any raid suggestions, so I think I will go and raid a very old friend of the stream, Ol M the Golem who is doing some uh, Final Fantasy XIV karaoke. Yeah, it's been quite a while since I've raided Cole, and even, well, yeah. No, hold on, I was going to, I was about to say something that would be logically imp impossible. But yes, it's been a very long time since I've seen Cole stream, and even longer since I raided. Necessarily, I would have seen Cole stream the last time I raided, so saying those in the reverse order would be uh, very incorrect. So. Anyway, <laughs> oh dear, pardon, I didn't mean to do that. Anyway, so, Cole M. the Golem, old Golem VTuber, longtime friend of the, of the stream. Yes, I actually first streamed on a Cole stream with my model. Uh, the customary raid message is, as we have arrived, as always. Yeah, the first time my model was visible on Twitch.tv was on Cole Cole's stream rather than my own. So yeah, so that should tell you a little bit about how long we've sort of been uh, associates. But yeah, anyway, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you'll continue to have a fine night every night, and I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.